Hello, everyone. We are working on chapter 5.3. Uh, we are now diving into section two, which is analyzing vector data. So the vector data is uh, to analyze vector data. Typically in the GIS kind of analysis, you have multiple vector layers. You have two layers and you want to analyze the spatial relationship between those two. And in Earth Engine, that is accomplished using this concept called joins. If you've done GIS before, you are familiar with joins, table joins, spatial joins, but in Earth Engine, joins work in a slightly different way than what you might be used to. So the joins, are a way to join two collections. You can join an image collection with image collection. You can join a feature collection with image collection. You can join a feature collection with feature collection, right? Any collection which allows you to take one item, find matching items from another collection. And we'll be using the vector joins today where we'll take one vector layer, join it with features from another vector layer. Okay. Uh, to do a join, you need two things. First, you need to define a filter. So say I have one feature from a collection. How do I find a matching feature in another collection? And that filter will determine what feature get picked up. These filters could be spatial filters, uh, such as intersects, within, contains, all of that. Or it could be a, a attribute filter saying, find me all the features matching that particular query. Once you have a filter, you need to specify what type of join that you want. And this will determine what features from what matching features will get in your output. So you have things like simple join, which is take all the features from the input layer, find me all the matching features from the second layer and so on. And we have save all joins as a thing that's also the cover. Once you have a filter and join, you will go and apply the join and then you'll get your results. And in Earth Engine, typically once you have a result, you need to process it further. Some sort of post processing is required to extract the values that you need for doing this. So we covered two examples of doing vector analysis. The first one is select by location. This is kind of bread and butter for GIS folks. If you have two layers, I want to select all the features from one layer that are within certain distance from another layer. Uh, here in the example, we'll continue to work with the San Francisco data. We'll take the roads data and we'll say, we have an interstate highway. I want to find all the census blocks that are within one kilometer. And maybe you are you know, proposing a new highway and you want to say, I want to kind of, uh, you know, find out which blocks will be affected in a certain radius. So we'll see how to kind of do this kind of query. To do this, um, we'll be using the joins. The second one, uh, we'll do a spatial join. I'll come to that. So let's just first dive into this example and we'll see how to implement this in an Earth Engine. So I'll load some layers here. We have the census blocks and roads and neighborhoods, the same three layers that we've worked before. And we have the geometry of San Francisco. And we have our blocks and roads that fall over the San Francisco boundary. And we have saved this into SF roads and SF blocks variables. So now we'll do the select by location. So we want to find all census blocks which are within an interstate highway. So if I look at the uh, SF roads, you'll see that there are few properties. There's an RT type property, route type. And I want to select use this to select all interstate highways. And the route type contains different values. So there's a value called I that is for interstate highway. I also want to show you this trick that uh, might come in handy. I have all these road features. What are all the different values that are contained in the RT type column? Uh, we don't know and you know how do you want to you can print a few or inspect a few, but I want to know all the unique values contained in this RT type variable. So I often use this function called aggregator. Aggregator is a great function which allows you to list all the values contained in a column. So if I say uh, SF roads aggregator A RT type, this will give me the list of all the values from all features. Right. So this will be a very long list of all the RT type values in each of the feature, and you'll get a list of values. So this will be a very long list of values. And, but if I have a list, I can call distinct on it. And distinct will just say, I have this long list, just give me the distinct values that are contained in this particular list. And this is the way to find unique values in a particular property across the feature collection. Very useful. Let's say you have 
a layer containing some admin names and you want to find all the distinct admin names. Uh, this is how you do is you do aggregate array and then you can call distinct on it. There are other shortcuts. So people have used aggregate histogram, et cetera, but this is the most intuitive one that I have found. And while it's computing, it takes a while to compute, but we'll see the list of unique values get printed. We'll first uh, find all the interstate roads. So we'll take SF roads and apply a filter. You can see it printed. These are all the unique values. There are six unique values. There's an empty I, M, S, O, U, and O. So we're going to take the I, which is the interstate roads, and we'll filter to all the roads that have the RT type of I, and this will be all interstate roads. So this is our main first collection. We want to find all blocks which are within one kilometer of an interstate road. And uh, let's just visualize all this data so we can see this. This one is simple. We are just drawing both SF blocks and interstate roads. So this is all the blocks in gray color. And all the roads in blue color. Yeah, so this is the all the blocks, polygons in gray, and the interstate roads will be rendered in the blue color. So we just use the same draw function that we learned in the previous section. Now our goal is to find all the blocks that are within this one kilometer of this blue line. Okay, so let's do a join. So as I mentioned, join needs two things. One is we need a filter. So we'll create a filter and we need to pick one of the filters. When you're doing joins, you need to use a filter, but not just any filter. If you look under e.filter, you have a bunch of filters that you have used before. And we want to pick the filters, which are known as binary filters. If I search for binary, you'll see that I get a subset of filters that look like this. So you can see I have a filter like this, which says, uh, unary or binary filter that passes and it takes form of this thing that it says left field, right value, right field, left value. And again, these are not well documented. So you don't really know how to fill this out. All it says is this filter should be used when you have two collections and you're trying to filter collections. And that means you can specify a field a property from the first collection or a property from the second collection, or you can specify a value from the first collection or a uh, a value from the other collection, and you can match either of those. So let's see how to use this function. We'll use this function called uh, within distance. Okay, so this within distance filter will allow you to find features within a certain distance. Okay, we're going to autofill this using control space, and let's fill all these different parameters. So the distance is always in meters in Earth Engine. So this is one thousand meters, one kilometer. Left field. We have our blocks layer, what you want to match from the blocks layer. And we want to match the geometry. And that is stored in this property called geo. Right value, we want to not match with the right value, but the right field. So take the appropriate, take the geometry from the second layer and match all the properties that are within that distance. So we use this. And generally, when uh, many functions in Earth Engine have this max error parameter, uh, if you read the docs, it says this is the maximum error, the error that you'll tolerate for reprojection. And this will specify a non-zero value will speed up your analysis considerably. So I'll use a one meter or whatever, whatever you can tolerate here. But a non-zero value will significantly speed up your analysis. So I recommend you use some value there. So we have a filter now. So we specify the filter. And now we'll create a joint. So we'll create, we have a joint. We'll pick one of the joints. Let's see what are the different joints that are available to us. If I search in the docs, you can see these are the different joints. We have the simple join, which is join that returns the elements of the primary collection that match elements of the secondary collection. So we'll, we'll say join our blocks with the roads. It'll find all the blocks within one kilometer distance of the secondary collection. So this is what we need for this purpose. The inverted is the opposite of that. It is basically the elements that do not match that condition. And we have other joints, which we'll learn in the next section. So let's just use the e join simple. So we have a join. And now we have, we need to take this join and apply it. So we'll 
save it into this variable close blocks. We'll say take a join and apply it. And it's got these three parameters, primary collection, which is our blocks. So SF blocks will be our primary collection. So remember the stuff from the primary collection will be done. So if we are looking for blocks as an output. So we want all the blocks that are within one kilometer. If you wanted roads, we'll use that as a primary collection. Secondary collection is our roads. So interstate highways, which is what we had used before. So we'll say interstate roads and then condition. So that condition would be our joint filter. And we are done with our joint. So this will be a feature collection of all the blocks which are within one um, kilometer. And we can visualize this. I'm gonna visualize this, in, draw this in an orange color and show this on the map. So this is what you get. Now it's uh, running this join where it's finding all blocks which are within one kilometer of a geometry of an interstate highway. Once it finds it, it's going to draw that, render them in this orange color, and then display this on the map. So this is your select by location output where you are selected a certain subset from a feature based on a condition that you specified. And this is geometric condition that was specified. And now you can see all the stuff in orange, which are all the blocks which are within one kilometer of an interstate highway. And again, this is dynamic. So if I change this to 500 meters, I'll get a different output. And you could export this or you can use this collection to do something else. All right, so this is done. We'll move to the next example, which will show you how to do a spatial join and do count points in polygon.